What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Just uh, finished pulling in a load of topsoil. Went to tractor supply today. This is what I found. Let me get some starter feed here. Yeah, holding the camera and you know, my, it, it, originally it sounded like a good idea in my head, but now that I'm, I'm halfway between dropping it and splitting this bag, I'm not, I think I'm about to put the camera down. All right, we're back. So I was speaking with the workers here and the birds I just picked up just got flown in. I'm like, flown in? They're like, yeah, we have some local hatcheries for sure. Um, but all of our stores in the Midwest, uh, all of our hatcheries in the Midwest uh, don't have any birds. I'm like, that's really interesting, I guess. I mean, I mean, I guess chickens are like in high demand now. Yeah, it's just really weird to, to think through everything that's going on. Like, why, why do these food places, like, why do they just, it seems like they catch fire a lot these days. <laughs> it's like late stage empire. I got some uh, Easter egg, Easter egg situations here. Picked up some additional Rhode Island Reds. So got some additional food. Need to grab a little bit more food additional water thing because I'm going through water like crazy now that it's hot like crazy I don't know what I'm doing with chickens I'm just I'm just a second year in and I'm just trying to figure it out I will tell you that if you've got a new flock and you don't have like any existing birds laying these are really useful these like fake eggs you could obviously use a real egg you don't have to buy one of these for five bucks you could just use a real egg probably but uh, they kind of need that, like that visualization. <laughs> you need to like put it in the coop and then like they'll start laying. Birds are, birds are weird, man. It's interesting because they were like, yeah, we uh, can't get birds in from the Midwest. Apparently like they use a hatchery and like their Midwest plants are like out of birds or something. It's weird, it was kind of weird, but nonetheless, picked up some feed, picked up uh, some, some, some additional Rhode Island reds, some Easter, Easter egg birds. I have to get a bigger feeder because uh, the one I have, not feeder, water, water deal. It's just it's so hot. It's been going, we've been going through like so fast. So I needed another five gallons. Still trying to figure out the bird thing myself. And uh, I'm going to show you over there in the next video what, uh, what exactly I'll be doing tomorrow. I'm basically up. Uh, extended a food fair food forest area and uh i'll show you the exact like from zero to start like on how i think about food forest permaculture I'm gonna add these guys over <clears throat> food forest permaculture the birds are a nice mix in because i'm gonna need them to work and fertilize the whole area but i thought i thought it was just a weird like man supply chains are getting they're getting weird you know they're getting super super weird and, uh, well, I mean, whatevs, I guess. I mean, at this point, it's like li things are going to go very localized, like very, very localized. You want to be in an area that was prosperous a hundred years ago that has like industry, has like the ability to produce food, has good transit in and out to other areas to get things, wheat, corn, like the necessities of life, like fuel. You know, you genuinely want to be in those type of areas right now. Like I've got a buddy or I've got, I've got a younger brother who's in Manhattan right now. And I've told him like, he's a single dude. So it's like, whatever you can do your thing. But I was like, there's a point where like, you're, you you got to get out, dude. Like it's, you're not going to want to be there. Like with what's, uh, with how this is going to unfold because it's just like in a contraction, you don't have specialization. Uh, you have like generalization. And so people become generalists, which is cool. Like, this is how you get like Renaissance guys. Like this is, you know, guys that have like, they they become like polymaths, you know, they're, they're good at engineering, but they're also good at, you know, agriculture and they're good at, you know, welding and they're good, you know, like that, that that's cool. Like, but if you're in an area where people are just specialists, yeah, it's going to be weird, especially if that if the area relies on external supply chain. Like if it's not a self-sufficient or self-sustaining area, it's kind of weird. I picked up some brown millet back here. I'll show you guys. I'm going to be putting that out probably tomorrow or the next day. But like trying to get more so self-sustaining to where like the whole thing, like the, the worms and the bugs and like 
they do their thing and create awesome soil and the grasses and the grains, they do their thing and the birds eat the grains and then poop it back out onto the soil and then it helps the bugs and it's just a big thing and then we eat the eggs and we eat the birds. Like that's, you know, a self-sustaining kind of cycle, but you want that on like a whole, like as far as whatever networks you're in, you, you want to know that they've got like control of the supply cycle. Not just like, oh yeah, it comes from it comes from Russia or India or Brazil or South Africa. Like you don't want to, you know, it comes from a brick country that is pretty anti-US dollar and anti-US at this point in time. And uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully we can get aluminum in. That, that would be good, but we don't produce it like locally. Like it's getting, you know. But anyway, this is necessary. Like I say, more like the M O A R more. Like let's let's uh, we need more of it because like I I. The uplifting stuff that I saw today while I was out was I had a customer of ours. We sold them some bamboo. They just planted it. They're going to do a homestead food forest thing. They're on a busy road. And I was impressed, like genuinely impressed. When I when we originally showed up, we did some grading there, some initial grading, cause, and it was, a, it was a wreck. And then we put in the bamboo for them. So this is a property that uh, we put in the bamboo here not too long ago. And they've since landscaped it. Most everything out here, some of it's decorative, but most everything out here is all edible which is super super cool this customer has like gone ham with like edible edible everything and i'm it's really positive to see it's so 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 cool to see they want the privacy from the bamboo they need a wind block and a way to shade some of the area i've got mangoes in here got sugarcane in there pomegranate mango apples these apples are a little close papaya but like good, a good, good, good effort. I love seeing this. Absolutely love seeing this. As opposed to just have a have a nice yard, but not doing much. Although there is a nice mango right there. Look at the fruit on that mango. So that's the that's the way forward, man. I'm so, so I love seeing this stuff. And I was like, all right, we'll see how this comes out. And they ordered a load of dirt today, and it came out. I mean, it's awesome. Like here's a lady who's got three mangoes. She's got sugar cane. Like she's just starting to experiment with these things. And what I'm learning about agriculture, homestead stuff is like, you, you can look at things on YouTube. You can read things in books. And like, ultimately it's about slinging an arrow. Like just, just shoot an arrow down range, see if it hits anything and, and just keep testing and repeating. Cause like, I, I thought I had my situation figured out. Then a cold snap came and like wiped me out pretty good on a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, okay, well that's, you know, and then, you know, the rains come and they, you figure out what's okay with water, what's not, what, what areas your drainage is good. Like, it's just a constant experimentation until you get it to where it's like a self-sustaining system. And once it's a self-sustaining system, then you're like, all right, now we're, we're starting to dial in. And this takes seven years. I had a mentor farmer. He's like, Travis, it's going to take you seven years. And I was like, ah, oh, come on, man. That's just your old, you know, this, I, I gave him every, you know. Every young kid, stupid thing in the book, it threw at him, you know, and he just laughed. And uh, man, I'm like, I've been at it now for a while, and he's 100% right. Like, I had to restart on some things, but I think in 2016, yeah, 2016, I, I like legit started agriculture stuff a little bit earlier than that because we had a rented shop and we were, you know, messing with it a little bit earlier, maybe 15. And he's right. Like, it wasn't until this year that we started to turn a profit on stuff and he's like i'm telling you it's gonna take you seven years to turn a profit and that means that you're starting to be self-sustaining you may need other inputs you know like i need i need chicken feed still from tractor supply and other things like that but like the cash flow that's generated is providing what i need to import in through the through the chain but he was 100 right he's like you're gonna have to nurse this thing for like seven years until it starts to go and i fought him on that but like the positive about everything breaking like as we're seeing it now is like it's not our system. That's what we have to understand about this. I watch some of these Gen X guys on, on uh, YouTube. A lot of Gen X guys on YouTube. All the finance guys are typically Gen Xers. And uh, it's an interesting generation because I'm a millennial. And uh, my uncle, uncle and aunt are Gen Xers. My parents are boomers. Um, and uh, on one side, got uncle and aunt, Gen Xers. It, they're very like, I mean, just look at like 90s rock and you, you, it'll tell you everything you need to know about Gen X. Like Gen, Gen X is like, they're underrepresented in Congress and the Senate. Uh, they, they're not, they're very independent. They're not ones for getting in there and shaking things up. Let's put it that way. Uh, 
<laughs> and I watch a lot of these guys and they're like, oh man, they're raising the interest rates. Oh man, think about think about being a guy that wanted to get his first house. Now he can't because the interest rates are going up. And you're like, dude, the inflation's like 9%, bro. Like, what do you want? Oh, the inflation is like, is like 9% right now. What are you going to do about this inflation? And it's like, okay, it's not, it's not our currency, you know, like it's, it's not our system and it's not our currency unless you own it. Like it's not yours, you know, which I think is important to, to really think through. It's like, unless you like, you know, I have silver, I have gold, like that's, that's mine. I have, I have, I have crypto on cold storage wallets. That's mine. Like that's, that stuff is mine. But like, the dollar, like these, these things like that, you know, I keep feeling them in here. Like, like the, this isn't mine, you know, like, like you think like, you know, uncle Benny here is like mine. Like it says right there on there. Like it, it says like, this is legal tender, like for all debts, public and private. Like it says it's debt right there on it. Treasury of the United States. Like, but it's a Federal Reserve note. It's a really weird thing. It's it's a really, I mean, you really look at some of the stuff. I have some weird stuff in here. But it's like, it's not ours. So it's like, and it's not our system that, that you know, it's just that we're like pawns and pieces in it. And I continue to say, especially these Gen X dudes, it's like, yo, the solution is being the solution. Like, you, we got to build, like, we have to build the new economy. Like, we have to figure out what do we want to use for currency? Like, how, how do we want to be like represented in government, if at all? Like, do you want to, you know, how do we, do we want to have a fear and death administration? Like, do we, you know, like, is any of that even necessary? Like, can we do like law on the blockchain? Like, can we like, like, is there like, like, what do, what do you really need? Like, you, you need a way to dispute, like, you know, because people, you know, there's human emotion, you need a way to dispute things. But like, can we just come up with newer and better systems? And like, the answer is like, yeah, we absolutely can. But we got to allow this old current stuff to just literally go to hell in handbasket. And like, you just watch it burn. And like, thankfully, you know, they seem to be burning it down pretty good. Like they're, 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 they're pretty much burning down. I don't know what they've got planned on like the backside of this, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> like, and so it's all like, you know, like eventually these people are just not going to trust it. I've got a nice little uh, crypto winter going on right now. I've been saying that for a while. Everyone was like, oh, Bitcoin's going to hundred K in time. Yeah. But like not, no, like, like it hit 60. It stopped hitting new highs, you know, 60, 66, 67. Like it stopped hitting new time, all time highs, went into a bear market. And now as it goes lower and lower and lower, people that use debt are getting margin called. So there's all this leverage in the crypto space. We don't even know how much leverage is in there because like the last time it ran up was in 2017. So we have no idea how much leverage has been put into that space. But we know as it goes lower and lower and lower, it's blowing people out, blowing people out. I think it'd be really interesting to watch like Michael Saylor get blown out. And be like, yo, man, Michael Saylor got blown out of Bitcoin. Like, that'd be so bullish for Bitcoin. It'd be like, I'd be, man, I'm getting on a tangent. But yeah, so I'm going to get these, uh, let me get these birds all situated. And, uh, you know, I will see you guys down in the comments. Let me know what you guys are working on. Uh, because I think that the solution is like build, build a parallel economy, build a parallel society, like be a producer of things and sell those things for a currency of your choice whether that's silver, gold, blockchain on the silver and gold, like you can do that. There's, there's a company called Loathe Blockchain. They, they will literally like you, it's a silver and gold based thing. You can, you can elect to have it shipped. I mean, you know, Bitcoin, Monero, like I just think using their garbage debt notes, they're going to print trillions of them whenever they need to. And like the average dude thinks that like the people that print these things are like necessary, like, they think that they like, like they like hold them up as like this esteemed like you know thing. It's like it's quite hilarious because these these people are like satanic in a lot of ways, and like they just breed fear and like you know it's just it's just like man, it's comical because you're just like I mean growing food and reading books and like you know listening to good music and drinking some wine like it sounds great to me like I. I I don't know what the problem is. Like everybody just needs to get the freak out of the system as best they can. And, uh, and just sit back and laugh at this. Cause this is like, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> anyway, guys, I will see you down in the comments below and watch for that next video where we get this seed planted with this top soil load that we just dropped. And I'll show you guys my methodology, but remember everything in ag that I've discovered is literally about sending an arrow down range. It's just trying to figure out what's going to work and what doesn't work because most of the stuff you, you try, not all of it's going to work.
So it's just about doing stuff and everybody at this point in time, I'm talking to you in June of 22, at this point in time, you are already late if you haven't started growing any of your own food. You have got to start. In the 1940s, 40% of all U.S. food supply was grown in victory gardens. We've got to get back to that number. So you have not started. Start with a tomato plant, but get going because it's literally about taking a first step.